Hello friends, today we are going to study the base, uh, control of microorganisms by physical aid method and which is included into the subject basic techniques in microbiology. Uh, basic definitions what is cleaning that is the control of microorganism is means that to stop the growth and to killing of the microorganisms microorgan we, as we know that microorganisms are very harmful may be harmful some microorganisms are very harmful to the human beings and the animals they cause many diseases to the human being and animals so control of microorganisms is very required step so how we can control the microorganism by using physical methods so for this for this topic we have to study some definition first is the cleaning cleaning is the physical removal of the foreign material uh, what is disinfection is the killing of many but not all the microorganisms it is a process that is the reduction of the number of the microorganisms or the contaminating organisms at a certain level and which up to which we can they cannot cause the infections as for example pathogens must be killed some organisms and bacterial spores they will be not killed by the use of the disinfection process disinfectants are the chemicals and that are used for the disinfections now the antisepsis they are the mild forms of the disinfectants that are used externally on the living tissues to kill the microorganisms as for example for on the surface of the skin and the mucous membrane now the sterilization sterilization is the process which achieves a complete destruction and killing of all the microorganisms including bacterial spores by physical procedures or the chemical agents it is principally accomplished by the steam under pressure that is the autoclaving dry heat by the hot air oven and the chemicals such as the ethylene oxide what is antiseptics a particular group of disinfectants used to reduce the number of the viable organisms in the skin act differentially on the organisms and the host tissues what is germicide that is the chemical agent capable of the killing microorganisms sporicides that is the chemical they can capable of capable of killing the bacterial spores that is the primary targets of the microbial control that are the microorganism that cause the infection or spoilage that are constantly present into the external environment highest resistant into the all microorganisms that are the bacterial endospores and the prions moderate resistance they are the protozoa fungal special uh, fungal spores and some necked virus and some resistant vegetative bacteria and the least resistant that are the most bacterial vegetative cells fungal spores enveloped virus yeast and the protozoa uh, this is the comparisons of some resistant microorganisms endospores they can be killed uh, or they can be killed at 120 degree celsius at the method by the heating method vegetative forms require only 80 degree celsius temperature then radiation uh, spores require 4000 Uh, gamma rays and this vegetative forms require only 1000 gamma rays so 4 uh, x that is the spores require four times higher radiation than the vegetative cells if we use the sterilizing gas such as the ethylene oxides then they require 20 uh, 1200 mg per liter concentration and this vegetative cells require only 700 mg per liter so from this comparison we can say that the spores are most resistant or spores require all these things higher sterilizing agent in higher amount than the vegetative form sterilization it remove all viable microorganism including viruses and the bacterial endospores so what is sterilization it is the complete removal of the microorganism which are in living form complete removal of the living all kind of the living organisms is known as the sterilization material is said to be sterile usually reserved for the inanimate objects mostly performed with the heat and sometimes chemical cold sterilizers are used these are some objects which are used into the laboratory they are need to be sterilized these are the objects which are used into the hospitals and other laboratories they are need to be sterilized what is disinfection we know that disinfection is the chemical which is used for the removal of the microorganisms these are the surface and other things can be uh, disinfected disinfectant by the use of this chemical such as the dettol and the lysols and the phenol so these are the disinfectant which is used for the removal of the microorganisms from hand and surface antiseptics applied directly on the exposed body surface to destroy or inhibit the vegetative pathogen what is sepsis the growth of microorganisms in the blood and other tissues and what is asepsis any practice that prevent the entry of the infectious agent into the sterile tissue 
what is side we can say that germicide bactericide fungicide what is side side means to kill bactericides that is the chemical that de destroy the bacteria they are known as the bactericide fungicides a chemical that can kill fungal spores and hypha and yeast it means that chemical that kill the fungi they are known as the fungicides the chemicals which can kill or inactivate the virus they are the viricide sporicide that chemical that can destroy the spores and germicide that is chemical agents that kill the microorganisms what is stasis or static to stand still prevent the multiplication not the killing but to stop the growth of the microorganism that is known as the static bactericide to killing the bacteria and bacteriostatic that is to stop the growth of the bacteria fungicide to kill the fungi and fungistatic this to stop the growth of the fungi same as the uh, germicide that is to uh, killed the growth of the microorganisms and germistatic it means that to stop the growth of the microorganisms what is decontamination that is used when actual sterilization is not needed but need to decrease the risk of infection or the spoilage what is sanitization any cleaning cleansing technique that mechanically remove the microorganism to reduce the contamination to the safe level Sanitizers, it the compounds such as the soap or detergent that can sanitize. Sanitary may not be free from microbes but are safe for the normal use. And the degermination, it reduces the number of the microbes on the human skin. Uh, what is microbial death? That is the cell structure become dysfunctional and the entire cell sustain irreversible damage. A cell that no longer no longer reproduce and that begins when a certain threshold of the microbicidal agent is present so here you can see that the effect of the non germicidal soap and the germicidal soap on the growth of the microorganisms after the consecutive days that is the germicidal soap it can reduce the growth of the microorganisms after three to four days and non germicidal soap soap it cannot reduce the growth of the microorganisms the rate of killing of the microorganisms it depends on the concentration of the killing agent and the time of exposure here we can see the equation n is equal to 1 by ct that is the n is equal to the number of the survival microorganism c is equal to the concentration of the agent which is used for the killing of the microorganisms and t is equal to the time of, of exposure of the uh, chemical agent that is you can see here that is the number of the microorganism is decreasing as the time is gone that is d is equal to the decimal reduction time what is decimal reduction time is the time required to reduce the population by 90 percent at a specified temperature it is known as the decimal reduction time this is the process of sterilization first step is the pre-soap then the cleaning then rinsing and the application of the disinfection or the sterilizing agent now mechanism of the sterilization any sterilization sterilizing method we are using but the mechanism will be remain as it is that is the first is the damage of the cell membrane uh, this sterilizing agent it may be denature the protein it may be modify the function group of the protein and nucleic acids and activity of the particular disinfectant may result from the one or the combination or the other combinations of the pathways first is the uh, denature of the cell membrane all microorganisms possess the cell membrane uh, disruption of the cell membrane is equal to the loss of cell permeability selective permeability so some uh, sterilizing agent they disrupt the cell membrane of the microorganism and because of the disruption of the cell membrane microorganism lost the cell selective permeability during via the cell membrane and ultimately they will be die or they will be killed uh, then some sterilization sterilizing agent they can uh, stop the protein and nucleic acid synthesis so any level can be affected at the level of the replication transcription or the translation of the nucleic acid some agents they bind to the ribosomes to stop the translation some sterilizing agent they bind irre irreversibly to the dna and preventing the transcription and the translation of the nucleic acids and some uh, sterilizing agent they can act as a mutagenic agent they can cause the mutation into the nucleic acid and ultimately they will produce the uh, wrong protein and this protein cannot be no longer it can be then the protein function protein must be into the native state it disrupts the native state of the protein and break the bonds of the secondary and tertiary structure of the protein it may some sterilizing agent it may coagulation of the protein by the 
uh, sterilization agents such as the heat alcohol acids and phenolics so they can cause the coagulation of the protein here you can see that this is the native state of the protein this is the complete denaturation of the protein some sterilizing agent they can change the shape of the protein and some sterilizing agent they can block the active site of the protein and as the protein will not function the organisms cannot survive and they will be inhibited use of sterilization and the disinfection that is the it prevent the hospital infection depends on the sterile equipment instruments and the dressings they uh, safe disposal of the infected material and microbiologist uh, production of the sterile media and the laboratory activities that is the use of the sterilization in for the microbiologist and almost all area of the medical practice like the surgery and the, the operation theater they need to be sterilized uh, factors affecting the efficiency of the sterilization physical environment presence of the moisture temperature ph concentration of the sterilizing agent hardness of the water then other objects the mature and state of the microorganisms present into the uh, sterilizing object ability of the microorganisms to inactivate the chemical agent so these are some factors which can affect the sterilization now the microbial control method there are three method for the microorganisms control of the microorganism physical agent chemical agent and the mechanical uh, removal physical agent it contain the heat and the radiation heat can there may be the two types of the heat one is the dry heat by the incineration and dry oven moist heat by the steam under pressure boiling water uh, and the radiation there are two types of the radiation one is the ionizing radiation it include x-rays cathode and gamma rays and non-ionizing radiation it include the uv rays other is the chemical method by the gas or liquid and the mechanical method by the filtration by air uh, and the filtration by the liquid now the physical control heat as a agent of microbial control it is elevated temperature are microbicidal and lower temperature are the microbistatic what is microbicidal that is to inhibit the growth of the microorganism and microstatic that is to stop the growth of the microorganisms this uh, physical control or the higher temperature can be use moist heat or the dry heat moist heat is more effective than the dry heat moist heat that uh, it coagulation and the denaturation and dry heat it remove the water from the organisms such as the incineration these are the uh, comparison of the moist heat and dry heat uh, times uh, that is moist heat require 121 degree celsius for 15 minutes 125 degree celsius for 10 minutes and 134 degree celsius for only 3 minutes for the sterilization of the uh, object and dry heat require 121 degree celsius for 600 minutes 140 degree celsius for 180 minutes 160 degree celsius for 120 minutes and 170 degree celsius for 60 minutes so from this comparison we can uh, study or we can observe that moist heat, moist heat is more effective than the dry heat bacterial endospores they are the most resistant spores for the sterilization so it is they uh, endospore require high temperature and high pressure for the sterilization and vegetative cells they are the less resistant and more sensitive for with both dry heat and the moist heat and viruses are fairly resistant to the heat now uh, moist heat is the preferred choice because it is easy to use it is easy to control cost effective and it is efficiently worked high temperature high temperature combined with the high moisture is one of the most effective method for the killing of the microorganisms dry heat is used to sterilize the surface and the materials which are not likely to break down in high heat and which do not contain any liquids such as the glassware such as the petrides flash pipettes though they can be sterilized by the use of the dry heat dry heat penetrates more slowly than the moist heat which destroys the microorganisms by coagulating their proteins and also destroys microorganisms by oxidizing their chemical constituents moist heat penetrates more quickly than the dry heat and it is used to sterilize culture solutions and the agar preparations and to sterilize the surgical instruments pressurized steam heat is needed to kill the bacterial endospores which can withstand boiling typically a pressure of 15 
psi that is the pounds per square inch is needed to create the steam at high enough temperature to kill the endospores spores of clostridium botulisms are killed within the 20 minutes by the moist heat at 120 degree celsius whereas a too high exposure to dry heat two hours exposure of the dry heat at the same temperature is required so from that we can see that uh, moist heat, moist heat is more effective than the dry heat these are the figure for the thermal death time and the decimal reduction time here you can see that the reduction of the number of the microorganisms as the time go on and here you can see that the reduction of the microorganisms as the temperature is increasing low temperature is uh, retard the growth of the microorganisms by slowing their the metabolism but it does not always always kill all the microorganisms so they can act as a bacteriostatic not the bacteriostidal it means that they can stop the growth of the microorganism so low temperature is generally used for the preservation of the culture not as a sterilizing method uh, refrigeration at the temperature of the 5 degree celsius is retard the growth of many bacteria and the fungi and freezing at minus 10 degree celsius to minus 20 degree celsius is also an effective but not the perfect mint of the sterilizing the uh, object or it is perfect for the retard of the microbial growth so from a practical standpoint view Le, uh, high temperature may be considered as a microbicidal and low temperature may be considered as a microbistatic so first we will take the heat sterilization by the moist heat uh, moist heat is more efficient in contrast to the dry heat we have already studied it causes coagulation and denaturation of the protein a temperature below 100 degrees celsius there are other method first, uh, first is the pasteurization it is used into the dairy industry vaccine bath it is used for the sterilization of the vaccine serum bath for the sterilization of the serum then the inspiration egg and serum containing media and can kill the spores at temperature 100 degree celsius one method is the boiling that is the boiling water 100 degree celsius sir and steam can also be used at the 100 degree celsius at temperature above 100 degree celsius is the autoclave which possesses 121 degree celsius and 15 lb pressure so it is worked on the steam under pressure and it is the best mean for the sterilization by the moist heat it is the most effective and sterilization it is used for the sterilization of the surgical instruments dressings and heat resistant pharmaceuticals preparation of the item we can wrap the item or the object and we can wrap the object or object or covered object can be kept into the autoclave and autoclave will sterilize the heat uh, moist heat or steam it will penetrate from into the object and the organisms will be denatured and protein and the other uh, structure of the microorganisms will be disrupted and the object will be sterilized so all the microorganism present into this covered object will be killed by the autoclave this is the principle of the autoclave uh, is that the, when the pressure of a gas increases the temperature of the gas increases proportionally for example when free flowing steam at a temperature of 100 degrees celsius is placed under a pressure of one atmosphere above the sea level pressure that is about 15 pound of the pressure per square each the temperature rises to the 121 degree celsius so as the pressure will be increased as the temperature will be increased and as the temperature is increased pressure will be increased simultaneously so both are the proportional process and temperature and pressure both will increase and ultimately they will reduce the growth of the microorganisms increasing the pressure up to 20 psi it will raise the temperature up to 126 degree celsius but why we are using only 121 degree celsius for 15 lb pressure because if we sterilize the media into the autoclave the media the median medium composition or constituents of the media should not be denatured so at higher temperature it is possible that the media can be denatured so that's why 121 degree temperature 15 lb pressure and time 15 minute is fixed for the sterilization of the culture media most autoclave they contain the, the sterilizing chamber into which articles are placed uh, and a steam jacket where a steam is maintained as the steam flow from the steam jacket into the sterilizing chamber cool air is forced out, forced out and a special valve increase the pressure to 15 uh, pounds per square inch above the normal atmospheric pressure the temperature will be rise up to 121.5 degrees celsius and the super related water molecules rapidly conduct heat into the microorganisms the time 
for the destruction of the most resistant bacterial spore is now reduced to about the 15 minutes. So this is the basic time and temperature for the autoclave. For denser objects up to the 30 minutes of the exposure may be required because it requires much time to inject the steam into the denser object. So for denser object we have to increase the time. But we cannot increase the temperature and the pressure because the higher temperature and higher pressure it may be denature the medium components present into the object. Uh, autoclave it is used to sterilize the culture media, used to sterilize the instrument, dressings and other equipments for the sterilization of the solution, syringe, needles and other numerous items that can withstand with the high temperature and the pressure. Sterilize bacteriological media and destroy the pathogenic cultures. The autoclave is equally valuable for the glassware and the metalware. Large industrial autoclaves are called the retorts but the same principle apply for the common household pressure cooker used into the home canning of the foods. So autoclave basically work on the principle of the pressure cooker. In pressure cooker also the steam is increased so pressure will be increased and the temperature will be increased same as into the autoclave. This is the uh, structure of the uh, instrument that is the autoclave. This is the uh, vertical autoclave and it is the horizontal autoclave. Now the indicator of the sterilization. Here you can see we have used some strips of the most resistant spores that is the bacillus um, stereothermophilus. Bacillus stereothermophilus spores are the most resistant spores and they require higher temperature and pressure that is the 121 degree Celsius for 15 LB pressure. So you, are, you can see the strip before sterilization and change into the color of the strip after sterilization. So this is the indication of the uh, uh, sterilization by the autoclave that is autoclave is working properly or not. Now the another technique for the sterilization is the fractional sterilization. Fractional sterilization it is also known as the tindalization is the method used to destroy the bacteria and endospores into the preparation of the grain spawn and agar which require no pressure cooker. In case the jar fitted with the filter disc or a polyfill lid filter are boiled or steamed at 212 degree Fahrenheit that is the 100 degree Celsius for 30 minutes in a pot with lid three days in a row. So three successive succe three times sterilization at the three consecutive days. Between the boiling steps into the jar are kept warm around 30 degrees Celsius that to allow the remaining endospores to germinate. So as one time sterilization has been done, all vegetative cells will be killed. Now incubation of 24 hour is given to the microorganisms. Now the spores present into the media, they will be germinate and it will be converted into the vegetative growth. Second day again sterilization is done at 100 degree Celsius for 30 minutes. Then all vegetative cells which are converted or which are produced from the spores, they will be killed. Again, the object is incubated for the germination of the remaining spores. Remaining all spores will be germinated and at third day, object will again sterilized at 100 degree Celsius for 30 minutes. So sterilization for at 100 degree Celsius for 30 minutes at three consecutive days. So all the days the vegetative cells will be killed and the spores will be germinated. So this technique is applied on the heat sensitive material, the material or the media or the cons media which cannot withstand with the 121 degree Celsius of the autoclave and high pressure that is the 15 LB pressure of the autoclave. So the heat and the steam sensitive uh, objects can be sterilized by the fractional sterilization or the tindalization process. Here we can use the boiling water for the tindalization process. The autoclave also have certain limitations. For example, some plastic wares, they will be melt into the autoclave at high pressure and high temperature. So they cannot be sterilized by the autoclave. Uh, heat require extra time to reach to the denser object because denser object can heat cannot penetrate easily into the denser object. So for denser object, we have to increase the temperature and the time for the sterilization. Now the other technique for the sterilization is the pasteurization. It can be done at 62.8 to 65.6 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. 
it is used for the fluids it reduce the number of bacteria it eliminate the pathogen present into the small numbers and improve the shelf like self life of the milk so it is not the sterilization method but it not complete remove the microorganisms but it is used for the reduction of the growth of the microorganism and for the removal of the pathogenic bacteria it is uh, flash method there are two method flash method exposed to 71.6 degree celsius for 15 second and another is the batch method it is exposed to the 63 to 66 degree celsius for 30 minutes pasteurized milk is not known as the sterile milk now sterilization by the dry heat uh, dry heat by the uh, by the use of the uh, hot air oven and the incineration it techniques include red heat it common use for the sterilization of the necrom wire and for the straight wires bacterial loop wire uh, and the spatula then the flaming it is used for the bacterial loop wire and the spatula then the incineration it is used for the sterilization of the needle and the uh, soil dressing hot air oven it is used for the sterilization of the glasswares and into the dairy industry infrared rays it is used to sterilize the glasswares and metallic instruments here you can see that the sterilization of the wire loop by the dry heat on the burner and that is the incineration that is the sterilization of the needle and other things uh, it is incinerated into the incinerating apparatus and hot air oven it is an electric oven it has the temperature uh, required for the sterilization by hot air oven is 150 degrees celsius to 180 degrees celsius for two to four hours it is used for the heat resistant item uh, for the sterilization uh, such as the glassware and the metallic instruments this is the chamber for the hot air oven this is the hot air oven which can be used for the sterilization of the glasswares into the laboratory now the another method for the sterilization is the radiation there are two types of the radiation one is the non ionizing radiation in which wavelength longer than the visible light uv radiation it has the wavelength of the 200 to 280 nanometer and it has the germicidal effect on the microorganisms and common use uh, of the radiation to sterilize the surface in hospitals and the operation theater sent to the laboratory ionizing radiation it has the two type one is the particulate that is the electron beam it is used for the sterilization of the instruments such as the syringe gloves dressing packs foods and pharmaceuticals and the other is the electromagnetic waves such as the gamma rays it is used for the sterilization of the disposable petri dish plastic syringe antibiotics vitamins hormones and fabrics ionizing radiation it ejects the electron causing the ions to form here this is the radiation source it will be passed the electron beam on the cell and the dna will be damaged non ionizing radiation it will also pass the electron and the dna will form it will form the abnormal bonding into the dna and the third is the uv ultraviolet it does not penetrate and no effect on the cell cold sterilization that is the no heat uh, this gamma rays most penetrating x rays they are the intermediate and the cathode rays they are the least penetrating rays uh, these are the material food products and other things which can be sterilized by the radiation non ionizing radiation or ultraviolet rays they require the 254 nanometer of the wavelength not as penetrating as the ionizing radiation it is the powerful tool for the destroying fungal cells and spores bacterial vegetative cells protozoa and the viruses ultraviolet radiation it require 200 to 300 nanometer it has poor penetration power and it form the pyrimidine dimer that is the thiamine thiamine dimer into the nucleic acid of the cell usually uh, ultraviolet radiation it is usually act as a disinfection rather than the sterilization it is used for the disinfection of the hospital rooms operating rooms schools food packets and the uh, to treat the drinking water or purify liquid low temperature can be used as a uh, not the sterilizing method but it can be used for the preservation method uh, method used is the refrigerator uh, temperature is 4 to 7 degrees celsius deep freezer minus 20 to minus 70 degrees celsius and liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degrees celsius it is used for the preservation of the tissue cell and the other bacterial culture and viruses and used into the application of the animal virology research then the desiccation desiccation is the 
uh, removal of the microorganisms or the inhibition of the microorganism by drying so water present into the cell of the microorganism will be come out and the organisms will dry and they cannot be survive uh, so it will cause the association cessation of the metabolic activity followed by the decline into the viable population dried spores remain viable for the uh, more period of the time the time of survival of microorganisms after desiccation it depends on the kind of microorganisms material in or on which organisms are dry completeness of the drying process and the physical condition to which the dried organisms are exposed another method for the physical sterilization is the lyophilization that is the drying of, of the cell at freezing condition desiccation means the drying of the cell and lyophilization is the freeze drying drying into the low temperature freeze drying it preserve the microbes and other cells for many years by freezing a culture into the liquid nitrogen and removing the residual water via a vacuum lyophilization prevents the formation of the large damaging ice crystals leaving the enough viable cells to enable the culture to be reconstituted many years later this is useful when storing a bacterial culture for future use into the laboratory then the osmotic pressure that is the removal of the sugar and the salt present into the cell so sugar and salt they will be come out from the cell that is the cells are exposed to the solution with a higher solute concentration water will be drawn out of the cell and the process is known as the plasmolysis and the reserve process which is the passage of water from a low solute concentration into the cell is known as the plasmoptysis the pressure built up within the cell as a result of this water intake is termed osmotic pressure plasmolysis results into the dehydration of the cell and as a consequence metabolic process are retarded partially or the completely high concentration of the salt or sugar inhibit the microbial growth by osmotic pressure so microorganisms or cells they are kept into the solution which contain higher concentration of the salt or the higher concentration of the sugar and they will be the growth of the organisms will be stopped the use of high concentration of the salt and sugars to preserve the food is based on the effect of the osmotic pressure uh, we have see, seen that some pickles and other things into the household purpose they can be uh, stored or they can be preserved in, at the high concentration of the salt and sugars they create the hypertonic environment that cause the water to leave the microbial cells and this effect is also called as the plasmolysis loss of water severely interfere with the cell function and eventually lead to the cell death this process resemble preservation by desiccation in that both method deny the cell to moisture it needs for the growth here you can see that the uh, salt and the uh, solvent solute and the solvent they are coming out of the cell and the cell become dry these are the some pickles and other food materials they can be uh, jam and other materials they can be preserved at, by adding the higher concentration of the salt and the sugar now the another technique is the filtration it is used to sterilize the heat liable liquids such as the antibiotics vaccines or this type of the compound they are very heat sensitive proteins they are very heat sensitive so they cannot be autoclaved or that cannot be sterilized by using heat so they can be filtered uh, this filtration unit they contain the membrane filter which is made up of the cellulose and which has the pore size different pore size such as the 0.45 micron so the material is filtered by the use of this vacuum and uh, this filter material the microorganism will be remain on the membrane filter and the liquid will be come out and this liquid is totally sterile complete free from complete any kind of the living organism and the organism will be retained on the membrane filter present between this unit so here from here we are adding the material that is the uh, heat sensitive material and here is the filter membrane filter and it will be filter the material another is the hepa filter which is used into the laminar air flow that is the high efficiency particulate air this hepa filter it provide the sterile air into the laminar air flow and uh, it make the chamber free from any kind of living organisms here uh, this is the filtration unit and this is the vacuum pump by which the liquid is pumped out and the, here is the membrane filter which will remain the retain the microorganisms thank you